when does a composite chart begin to unfold? Amongst relational astrologers or relationship astrologers, there is a controversy around the topic of the composite chart, which is the midpoints between the two natal charts or more of people involved in a relationship. Some people say that the composite chart doesn't begin to play out until the establishment of kind of like committed uh, relationship. Uh, so at first you have two charts interacting, which is the synastry. And as the relationship builds up is the composite. I have another point of view. As a person who started her own journey with astrology, uh, with composite charts and outer planets to inner planets, I saw that they can play out on the very first stages of interactions, just like all the other um, relational charts. I have uh, experienced various cases for this, both in my clients, uh, in my own experiments with um, asking people for their own charts on the go before I even get to know them, uh, telling them what are the points of challenge that I see to this and immediately they started playing these points out from the composite. <laughs> so this was a, an experiment that I made. I'm the reluctant data. So I used uh, OkCupid to just get to know people from various countries and I used dating to experiment with astrology. Um, but also uh, when you talk about charts where people have no connection um, uh, then relationship astrologers that come from relationship counseling, their objective is to point you towards a relationship, which is okay, and they want you to be as concrete as possible, which is very okay. Um, however, when we are talking about a composite chart or a synastry chart, we can have these things with a country, with um, a, a person that inspire us, with a particular date, okay, not a date like dating a person, but an event, okay, is the chart of an event versus our chart. Every trans transit chart is a synastry chart between current events and our chart. Uh, and when we talk about composite, I have personally seen them being very loud right from the get-go. So... I urge you to adopt a different um, uh, perspective and just try it out. Don't believe me. Just look at composites you have, uh, even with people you don't have a particular relationship with. Look at the composite chart for you and your favorite musician, for you and your favorite artist, for you and your favorite celebrity or, or teacher that inspired you. And I want you to uh, um, pay attention to this because certain themes play out. One very notable theme that played out for me was with someone that I absolutely don't know personally. And a con and uh, when you look at like the synastry chart, um, I don't remember even if it says something uh, particular. It is Rahu Moon uh, and uh, upon eclipses, like I said, karmic uh, things come to the background, but it's not relationship or anything like that. When I looked at the composite, immediately there was Chiron on the 22nd degree. And of the to kill and be killed, and Karen is the wounded healer, and this person was in risk of assassination, or is in risk of assassination. And even the way that I approached uh, uh, the case had to do with another case to do with that. Um, and Karen is about the wounded healer, and here the 22 is the to kill and be killed. And I was, well, that is so loud. And as Karen right now is approaching 22nd degree, of Aries, um, I will be making great contributions um, on the, this topic. Um, and so um, this is uh, one of the ways in which a composite can just be so loud even when you don't have uh, the traditional view on composite charts. And this happens because traditional relationship astrologers their marketing strategy and also their teaching are all pointed to 
um, bringing their clients to have successful relationships. Okay, so they don't have business to um, to even look at charts sometimes. They don't have business to look at all these ethereal relational things. Uh, they want to get a result. You engaged, you married, you committed is for them another successful story that they can pursue on um, to their series of success and see this approval that their studies on relational chart is correct. I'm not a typical animal in this. <laughs> okay, I'm a Trojan horse in every dating website because I don't do dating. I'm uh, um, bad on the algorithm. Yes, I would use OkCupid to get to speak with people from all around the world in the excuse of dating. I would date people just to get to know people um, uh, and say, oh, maybe if something uh, turns out more, yes, okay. Uh, and I would do the unthinkable when I was learning about astrology of relations. I was like, okay, and we, if, if we want to get people to be comfortable with asking for a birth chart uh, for the person and make it fun and entertaining, um, then I did this myself. Uh, so I got to pay attention to things and to look at things and to observe things and to see patterns that people don't look at because they are goal-oriented while I was just, I'm sorry, playing around. Uh, not to mean with mess with anybody uh, at all, um, <laughs> but just like I had other, other things. It was boring for me to just date people, you know. Uh, I wasn't playing with people's hearts. I wasn't manipulating anybody. It was not the case at all. Um, but I definitely checked uh, unusual types of relations. And so uh, where it can help you? First of all, um, if you are drawn to a certain figure, if it's a person, to a certain figure, to a certain person, don't be shy. Check the synastry. Check the composite. There's a reason why you're drawn to this person. There's a reason what the composite charts and the synastry charts, relational charts, are doing with each other. Uh, especially now around eclipses where karmic relations come to the fact, fated relations. Um, and those things are very real. It's not about romance. It is about uh, what is the function of the encounter. Okay, if we put you and you together, what do you make together? And this making together is very important. Okay, I've kept, I kept having, for example, Julian Assange again, 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 again. Why? The eclipse is 2017. He began to serve his time. Now in 2024, he's in the, about to be um, extradicated if we don't manage to avoid it. And there is the movie coming out, The Trustful. So, of course, this name would come again and again and again. Yes, I don't, haven't looked uh, deeper into uh, uh, more than that. Um, now, this is a great, great exercise for you. And if you are looking at relational charts for your relationships, it would benefit you a great deal. And again, I want to bring up Esther Perel. Um, I think the, the first thing you need to learn, even if you look for monogamous relationship, is uh, where do they fail? Where do they fuck up? Um, and kind of this early learning. And Esther Perel is very good with telling of the why people cheat and what people are looking for in relationship, how can people can be very much in love and suddenly have affairs, even if they thought of themselves as monogamous. And this is very much in the spirit of Uranus and Uranus in a, in a relational sign, a Venus sign. Um, and this is um, very important astrologically to acknowledge those weird, unusual phases and what their contribution is to actual uh, valuable and intimate relations, uh, both from the sense of uh, if it's, you know, actual cheating, then what, what happened there? What is the composite? I had charts of married people coming to me saying, I don't understand. I divorced my husband because this person, this person divorced their person. Are we like twin flames? Are we this? Are we that? Mostly I would see Uranus uh, in the chat and I would ask more about uh, the issue. They would tell me, yes, I changed my entire career. I changed everything that I'm doing. Um, I moved to another country. I, um, I don't know, some rare cases had children together. Uh, I did something very special that, that uh, gave me life. So this is um, how this unusual relationship would come about. And 
uh, another facet of this is that um, when you under when you get acquainted with understanding what is this connection about so when you're actually dating a person it's going to be easier for you to understand what is this about is this am i attracted to this person am i drawn to this person uh, because this is a relationship for me or is it f serving a certain role in my life um, for which uh, falling in love can be uh, a part of and can be not a part of uh, so is it um, an affair is it a relationship uh, why am i so drawn to this person uh, right now i'm not giving readings um, but uh, i can tell you for free that uh, it is a time where karmic relations come into the back, nodal axis related relations coming into the background so if you're dating right now um, so first of all yes your composite look at your composite your composite is loud and you can have a composite with a person you never met okay look at that look at that freaking composite it has something to tell you both on the level of the challenges yes you see it playing out and on the level of why you came in together what is your chart and another person chart doing together why this person is accompanying you for so long what is going on so around this time i'm sure you will find uh, nodal axis relations um, uh, which means that it can even be a cross lifetime uh, type of encounter uh, it doesn't mean good or bad it just means that you understand what this is about uh, so it's easier for you okay um, and uh, one great thing that you can do with this information is to act upon these aspects okay i have a chiron in gemini sign yes and this chiron is in aries sitting pretty opposite in pluto in scorpio and pluto retrograde so my speech style is usually um a, a, a passionate div divisive even though i don't intend to um a, a, the difficulty to express myself or speaking a lot uh, and so on and so forth um difficulty to with the rece receptivity um and uh, responsiveness to information uh sensory data overload and so on and so forth but when i bring in other charts or sometimes i bring in other charts then my communication style is improved by the merit of the composite for on the other hand when other energies come then i can have uh, the other way around okay if we together make a hard aspect uh, with uh, pluto then the other way around um, and so different charts different people will accompany you when you come to exercise a certain quality in your life um and this is uh, excellent it's also true with transits there are certain time elections okay electional astrology uh, where it's better to do one thing than the other thing for example the lunar mention for today is great for marketing and merchandise is great for trading yes it's not gr great for justice so what i try to do i made experiment to do uh, uh, uh with the episode that i uploaded today for the moon in 22nd degree of gemini i called it truth sales and the trustful so involved marketing and um uh, and the justice and see what happens i don't know what happened okay is it remedial is it going to be a flop because of the lunar mention is not favoring justice um yes i don't know uh but um this is also how a synastry between the current events and your natal chart is playing a part this is the essence of electional astrology okay you want a good synastry between you and the current times um now anything more that i can add about the value of composite charts uh, midpoint charts um, they really tend to how your energies blend so you think about when two become one 
how your energies blend and what you're making together. It's not the D9 chart, it's not the Navamsha chart, which is excellent for that. Um, that tells you, okay, when you have a D9 chart with an accentuated composite chart uh, with a person, you know it's a very fated chart. This person will accompany you for a very long time, even your entire life. And that can be as an inspirational character, as a, um, a guide, you know, like spirit guides. Um, you know that you are going to derive a lot uh, with this. And maybe you meant to create something that integrates their intelligences. Uh, so, um, and, the, and the Vedic use Navamsha chart for both after you turn 36 and for your marriage. It, it doesn't mean that this is the only use of Navamsha chart, of relational chart. Navamsha chart can tell you if there is an additional fate factor between you and the chart of another person. Now that we are dealing with eclipse shade on the um, relational uh, planets, which is Mars and Venus, we are dealing with big time such connections that bring in something new to the world. Uh, and so um, there are various ways to uh, connect the what this, what that. If you want to uh, uh, apply for a reading uh, with me, um, then uh, it can be the case that there are some readings that I will be get, getting the calling to take. Um, Yes, uh, and it's not about uh, necessarily the price tag. Uh, yes, I usually I'm very expensive, but um, if you believe you have a story that for some reason you want me to look at around this topic of relations, uh, then you can contact me on my Twitter. I will not write to you, uh, but you can contact me on my Twitter. Uh, you can tell me, please tell me, why are you turning to me, okay? Why do you want me to look at it? Because uh, right now I'm doing series, I'm doing Water Expands Upon Cooling. I have another series coming up um, to do with, uh, um, something to do with uh, WikiLeaks. Uh, and uh, taking a look again at some of these contexts in 2024. Um, and, and these are many projects that, are uh, uh, not a one-to-one -one person. However, because uh, this is Eclipse on relational charts, it may be the case that some people um, um, believe that they should be hearing from me about their charts or their relational stories or want me to take a look at a certain story and see if I have uh, a perspective on why is this happening in my life I don't promise anything in this regard. I don't promise to see anything in this regard um, uh, because it's not always uh, accessible to everyone. Um, but you can contact me and you can tell me, please, why do you want me to look at this? Why do you want me to look at this? Okay, why me, not another astrologer? Okay, my chart is out there. You can do a synastry of my chart and your chart, a composite of my chart and your chart. Uh, and you can tell me why do you think I'm the person to look at this story and why should I be looking at this story? Okay, so it's something you felt the cause. It can be simple as I feel a calling to turn to you. I don't know how to explain it. Okay, it's not an audition. Um, uh, and so if I get the calling to yes to do this reading, um, then uh, yes, we can uh, um, discuss uh, the issue. And it's not about the price tag. It's about um if it is fated for me to give this reading to you uh, basically and under what conditions uh, so um, so that's something that I uh, um, and do not rule out like I said I'm very busy doing right now my projects um, that are on a mass scale still culminating from the year nine and in, into my year one of uh, numerological year. Um, and I hope that this very fresh view of relational charts 
uh, is going to both revive your thinking of relationships and your uh, relational understanding of the world. Okay, so you are looking at the world as relational, uh, and this is allowing the intricacy and covering for many, many, many uh, cosmology and epistemology and ontology questions, and many philosophical, but also very uh, practical questions. Yes, uh, as well as um, adding another facet, another layer. Uh, that uh, other astrologers or other relationship astrologers would not go there with you, okay? They would not delve into this with you. They would give you certain advice that is more to bring you on the concrete level. Like, you want to be in a relationship, let's work on you being in a relationship. Um, and they would not delve farther uh, into uh, your life, while I, as an outer planet girl, uh, with Uranus in the uh, 10th house and Jupiter sign, uh, in, um, in a very interesting aspect to Venus, um, am doing. Okay, so if you want the unusual relational uh, perspective, and because here my Uranus is Jupiter sign tropically, then I do open myself to consultations that are more of a philosophical nature. What does this mean? Um, Jupiter rules our philosophy and our worldview. I don't know astrocartography good enough to give you a reading for contemporary time because we're a freaking war. And there are more things to look at, like parents and stuff like that. Uh, but when it comes to um, things that involve Uranus, the, the planet of unusual thinking, and Jupiter, the planets of beliefs, of worldviews. Um, if you have such questions that are more for like a philosophical advice, uh, not a guru or a teacher, but to think with you, to look at the chart, to look at your dilemma, to see how it is showing in your chart, to see what implication it has on the world. When did this start? Maybe you have a chart for when you started to think about this dilemma or about this topic um, and to see the context for uh, um, your worldview uh, today then through astrology I may be uh, taking such consultations um, this is where um, you, you simply have a philosophical discussion to have with me uh, and again please tell me why do you want me to look at this chart? Why do you apply to me? Um, and, um, uh, and, and yes, what are your expectations from such conversation? Um, this is, uh, yes, another option uh, that I see uh, that is possible. Uh, classic relational readings. I think there are good astrologers that deal with that. I think there's also great information for you to uh, to do this if you're even a little bit curious about astrology to learn how to do this yourself. Um, uh, but yet again, because this is such a karmic time for relations, uh, people may get these things that they don't know what it is, what it coming to serve, and they have two charts. I am one of the astrologers that if you give me charts, I look at them. You give me charts, I look at them. Uh, my point is more about uh, you. Uh, I don't. What I don't do is profiling. What I don't do is you want to get information on the other person. Um, uh, it's not. That's not uh, the point. Uh, what I do do is to concentrate on you. Why did you come to meet this person? Why is this person in, impacting you? What could you create together? What can you harvest from the conjoining of these charts? Uh, so in the past, I, lo I looked at the challenges and I made great contributions about this. Um, but uh, today I look at it from another point of view. And this is what can you harvest? What can you harvest from these charts? Uh, what good comes out of you two coming together? Okay, uh, because a lot of the relations right now are karmic. So it's no good for me to tell you, yes, this is challenging. Yeah. But is something fated here? So what good can come from here? 
Uh, and when you tend on the good that comes from here, you can both remediate the things that are not the good that comes from here, but you can also find this good that comes from here and um, uh, let go of what, uh, what and who is not uh, serving. Uh, and this is a good time for doing that with Ketu in Libra. Uh, as well, you can have innovative approach to relations. Um, and this is one of the things that I'm an expert on, not because I'm an expert on relationships uh, or romantic relationships, but because I have been uh, doing relational stuff uh, in a very unusual way. And so um, when it comes for you and is fated for you to begin to look at things differently, instead of trying to go the, the, the usual way of, oh, why am I obsessed about this person? What do I do about this? How do I forget about this person? Or why this person is uh, trying to approach me? I don't understand what they want from me at all. Uh, yes, they might not be um, of particular uh, 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 meaning in your life beyond the certain things that this connection is meant to do in the world. And this is another thing that is, I want to emphasize here is what is this connection meant to bring to the world? Okay. Uh, sometimes this would be hard aspects. Um, what is this connection meant to do to the world? And when we are approaching Rahu and Ketu on uh, the axis where Saturn is, we are going to be talking about a lot of Pluto-Saturn conjunction and squares playing, already getting into action. And I want to support you. I have been going through this. I want to support you on this um, because uh, those are the uh, uh, encounters that are going to be changing the face of our society beyond recognition okay saturn is structure is ruling pluto right now and saturn pluto hard aspects a crisis to do with that um so if you have this it's not impossible that um that i'm of use to you and to watch my videos is of use to you um and this is uh when when you know this and when you understand this then you can see things in the correct perspective regarding relations. And, um, and this is not a, a, a shallow or an image level thing. Here it is authentic, it is real, uh, as real as can be. And innovation is required at every step when Rao is in Aries. And the holistic, compassionate perspective is required at every step when Rao will ingress into uh, Pisces. Okay, so um, yeah, I think I said what's ne what needs to be said uh, on this.